Welcome to the Marijuana Multiverse. John is here. Last week, he abandoned me. I'm not sure why, but, you know, there's there's a multitude of reasons. <laughs> What's up, dude? What's going on, sir? Heck yeah, man. What is going on? Yep. What's going on, everyone? Happy Monday. Absolutely. Feeling good, dude. Sometimes the pressure's on, but, you know, there's always a way out, always a solution. You better believe that. Guys can figure out how to rob banks and get to the moon and make airplanes and all kinds of cool shit than uh, the things we deal with in our lives also have solutions. Yes, they do. And uh, man, I'm still pumped off of the weekend that we spent in the Emerald Triangle. Super exciting. Got a lot done. In many ways, it was like a blur. But uh, I want to say that uh, I want to get John's reflection on, on initial initial reactions from the weekend. Um, it was a fun time. It was a fun, fun time. Um, I don't know. I had a little fun being let loose with my camera uh, when we went out and did our uh, little business things. On the beach? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I don't know. I got some nice stuff. You know, some stuff I might want to keep for myself, too. But <laughs> um, no, nah, man, but the uh, we, we, attici- we what was it called? The, we, we attended the seed swap, um, which was a lot of fun. We got to see a lot of familiar faces. Uh, shout out to pa- Poncho Brothers who were there in attendance. My boys, what's going on? <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, who else did we see there? Uh, we saw quite a few people, actually. We sure did. Yes, yes, we did. Uh, Mendocino Family Farmers was there. Big Phil, yep. yep Dr. Yep. Phil Nasty. Dr. Phil Nasty. Um, always a pleasure to see him and smoke what he got. He Man, has got some legendary weed on him. Love it. Oh, well, thank you, sir. I mean, so I had a good time. I had a good time. Um, what about you? What were your thoughts on the weekend? Oh, man, the weekend was dope. What's up, Heather? We seen Heather on Saturday. Heather was out there. I got your Don Carlos, your Blackberry licorice, and your cherry licorice. We're going to smoke it on camera. Uh, yo, I mean, we're going to go into greater detail, but for me, uh, last time I was at the Emerald Cup in December, uh, we were doing interviews, so it was cool to kick back and chill, talk. And I got a bad habit of, like, starting a conversation then jumping somewhere and coming back and i was all over the place dude i believe that 100 percent, 100 percent full <laughs> yeah man it's hard for me to stay in one place or i just got to make a habit of it you know what i'm saying we're smoking on some wood white high craft some viper cookies some fire dude uh, that's the reason why we we're in fort bragg on friday it's a beautiful day a beautiful break from the rain we got to enjoy uh, the town of Mendocino, before we hit the facility, um, Woodwide, we got to check out the coast and um, do some drone shots. John got some footage as well. And it was a beautiful day. I didn't get to go down to the beach like you did, man. How were the views down there? <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. Um, no, it was cool. A lot of starfish. A lot of starfish. Oh, really? There was a lot of starfish like chilling on the, on the rocks. and That was pretty cool. There was like maybe seven of them um nice it was beautiful man it was beautiful that was really cool getting to hang out with justin um and uh just kind of get to adventure around you know kind of you know it was uh it was nice to be out you know especially around nature i think spend too much time in the studio hell yeah i know what you mean man no windows (laughs) yeah dude to the outside world man but, uh, dude, we did get to work with Justin. He kicked off those drone shots on the coast. Uh, Woodwide, it was awesome visiting that spot. But what I'll say is, you know, we're turning a new corner here at GW Smoke Break. We're trying new things. And like you've heard me say in the past, our goal is to add value to the supply chain here in California. Dope. Uh, to work with the licensed supply chain. Did you like that uh, hit? Good hit? Yeah, it was dope. It was nice. Hell yeah. And John's absolutely right, man. It feels good to get back to nature. It's healing. Uh, we are natural ourselves, you know, we're not the brands of clothes that we wear or the cars that we drive. I've gone that confused in the past, believe me. Uh, I used to think I was like Michael Jordan and fucking Nike and, you know, all that cool shit. But um, it only goes so far, you know. It's the man or the woman that makes the clothes, not the other way around. But that being said, dude, it was such an awesome day. You know, I checked the weather, so I knew it was going to be dope. And uh, the time that we did get to spend on the coast was really special to me because uh for those of you guys that don't know justin just won as he goes by dj just won he's up in southern humble and when gw first break gw smoke break first started 
uh, he was the guy uh, before Rolf even joined the team uh, that would help us out with the the drone shots. You know, so we basically went to the same location. It's been what four years? About three, four years, three years. Good, actually, hold on, maybe four years. Good three, four years since uh, the Emerald um, Mountain Legacy series that we did out in Comchi. Are you guys still getting no sound? Because I just checked for the audio. So let me know if you guys aren't hearing us. So I can. You check the audio right now. Yeah, I just was doing it while you were talking. Yeah, let's check it out. Should be good. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, headphone. Yep, zoom. should be all good, guys. So yeah, if you guys are not hearing us, please yep. do. Let I think us Heather would let us know. Yep, yep, let yep. Definitely, dude. Definitely, most definitely. Okay, cool. Thanks, Heather. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Prince Patty. Yeah, Heather G in the house. Yo, we're gonna smoke some of her herb that came off of where she's at, Miranda. Um, but I want to hear from you, bro. Like once we got to Woodwide, you know, I put a lot of res well. I like to joke around, but we worked as a team, and I think we got um, a head start on our production by doing pre-production work and work coming up with a shot list. And you know that requires it's it's cleaner when you use language that they use within the world of cinematography and film and so forth. So John uh, definitely was the reason why we were prepared in that regard. And when it was time to execute, man, like uh, did you have a favorite like shot? You know difficulties anything you want to share with our people well i don't think i have a necessarily a favorite shot if anything i think the stuff from outside i really enjoyed you know you know it's, i mean I, I told you this like you know and uh i don't know i have i think it's it's more there's a lot more i can do with outside shots than inside shots you know, especially when it comes to things being like um, visually appealing, you know, and inside the, uh, you know, inside the shops and stuff, it's a lot of gray, you know, a lot of, you know, the only color mainly is from like the plants themselves. And uh, there's only so many things you can do before it just feels like, you know, repetition as far as like the shots and stuff. So a lot of it's the same stuff each time. But when you're outside, <coughs> there's a uh, there's more space to do things. So I think, I, you know, when it comes down to, like, you're asking my favorite shot, you know, it's probably with something down by the water, to be honest with you. Yeah, he's keeping for himself. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's cool, man. That's cool. No, nah, but yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, you know, definitely got some really cool stuff out there. Um, I'm excited to see what some of the shots that Justin got. Um, Absolutely. You know, you know, I mean... Yeah, we had everything kind of planned out and whatnot, and like yes, we have an idea of what how things looked and whatnot. But like you know, he has the footage, so like when when we get a chance to check it out, you know, we'll see. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I remember from what we saw, some dope ass drone shots, dude. Beautiful, made the coast of Mendo look, look like the coast of yeah, Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, I will say that the you know I will say that the drone shots <laughs> that, that being one of the, the one of the things I definitely was able to see. <coughs> That was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty nice. It was pretty nice. Yep, yep. And on the inside, within the facility, you know, Mikey got to really narrate uh, the content that we're envisioning that we're going to produce both in English and in Spanish. And it's really cool opening up the aisles between the beds and having them walk down with Justin and, and John. You know, it's called, well, the actual angle and so forth, it's not like a over the shoulder and I think he was coming at the camera but they got two camera angles and it was really smooth really clean and we got everything on the shot list their product is going to get branded and packaged in the next few weeks so we're going to get those relatively soon they're actually going to go to Justin but uh I'm happy man I think we we got definitely got the job done and we got to go to the beach after Yes, we did. <coughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's true. We did. We did. We got to go to the beach, <coughs> which was nice. Which was really, really nice. Um, yeah, man, it was a beautiful view. It was a beautiful day. It was great. Got pizza. Yeah, we got pizza, which was bomb. Pizza's tight. Which one is that? Mm. What you busting somebody, out over somebody there? Somebody wants to smoke blackberry liquor. What's he busting out? You want to get I out? can dig it. I can dig it. Some blackberry licorice here. Yo, so Friday was super cool, you know. Um, there's not much content in Spanish. Um, I would say, like, uh, I don't see too many brands um, communicating in Spanish. 
but more so it's a feeling, right? I think when um, something you see makes you feel a certain way, commercial makes you feel good, makes you want to go connect with that product, consume that product. That's really what we're aiming for. So really stoked on a job. Well done. The only major blunder is uh, we're supposed to get out to plant shop. And I think it's my fault for trying to cram too much in one day and literally not um, accounting for the time it takes to eat. <coughs> And in a lot of cases, what you would basically call setup and breakdown or just workflow. Um, so the idea is to reschedule that. That's the goal. And uh, we actually ended up in Ukiah anyways that night uh, after eating dinner. But I, uh, I had my shirt and everything. I was ready. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I felt bad, man, because Mo from Sunbright Garden, Sunbright, uh, she made it out there. So I need to leave her a message. I apologize, basically. Oh, dude, that smells so good. So dank. Yo, so um, spent the night in Ukiah. Ukiah Ukiah's about an hour from Area 101. (coughs) 45 minutes to an hour. I would say it's a safe bet. And uh, sticky, huh? It is. It is very sticky. It's chewy, bud. And once we got there, dude, I mean, the party was starting... At 12 officially, but when we got there closer to 11, it was like, or 11.30, I think. It was already uh, popping, dude, for sure. What are your thoughts, man? I mean, that's the first time you were at Area 101? Yeah, first time at Area 101. Uh, we got to see Tim. Tim was there. You know, we kind of expected him to be there, but yeah. It was uh, it was nice. It was a dope spot. You know, like I was when I was sitting there talking to the Poncho Brothers, we were talking about the spot and whatnot, because they, I think, had been there prior. They have know. been. Oh, no, no, no. I take that back. They that was, it, was, it was their first time as well, you know? So we were talking about it. I was like, it was a cool little cozy little spot. I dig it, man. I dig it. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. A lot of great energy. Got great people. Um, so it was definitely fun. Definitely. Definitely a good time. How were those tacos? Yo, those tacos were bomb. Yo, shout out to whoever it was. Turped out kitchen. Turped out kitchen. Yeah, you guys was killing it with them tacos. We got six of those. <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> yep. I try to make sure that we were we were fed decently. Oh yeah. Those tacos were bomb. And you got to meet a lot of new people. I did. I met a lot of new people. Um, which is always nice. It's always nice meeting people. Uh, met a lot of a lot of interesting different characters. Um so it was it's always it's always a blast getting to meet people. Um you know, because you know, it, it definitely it allows new stories to come into play, and it's just it's, it's an awesome time. And it was really nice meeting people, and just getting a chat and smoke with people. It was dope. Heck yeah! <clears throat> we normally work at events, filming and whatnot, so it was actually really cool to be able to just kick back and and yeah, mingle and chill on the couch and smoke rosin and dank. And shout out to Juan at Solve on the Sanctuary. Sanctuary. Shout out uh, Horizons Girl. Uh, she brought out her her dab rig for the hash, really dope, custom piece just for the, just for the hash, you know the bowl and everything, that glass wand. I mean, you ripped it. Yeah, it was dope. <laughs> A couple, I think like twice. That was really cool, man. Uh, and overall, it just reminds me of what this culture is all about. And you know, when you're hanging out with your friends, you want to do something cool, listen to some cool music. Is it on me or is it on you? I already took a bowl. Oh, shit. I didn't even catch that. <laughs> yeah. I was hacking, man. Uh, I mean, it's it's something that um, is nice to experience, you know, the sense of community within the world of cannabis, you know? And it's so different than um, the events we go to that are industry-oriented, that are really, like, there to sell you something. Or, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I think ultimately there's a there's a – diverse spectrum of people within the cannabis industry that produce product, that sell product, that, you know, distribute product, that middle product, and um, all that comes with different energy, you know what I'm saying? And I would say, like, from my experience here in Northern California, there's definitely a community that exists here and around the world, of course, um, of people who have allowed themselves to be 
um, guided by the plant, transformed by the plant, um, have really worked at being better versions of themselves. Um, how can I say this? So that really it's this heart, it's this beautiful vibe, you know, when like-minded people get together and, um, it's something to learn from for sure. Cause I wasn't always like the person that you hear talking today, you know? And it's awesome that John got to experience it. There's a lot of OGs in the building, you know, operators from the war on drugs, uh, from the prohibition days. And it's really, it's kind of really obvious, you know, um, once you get to meet professional operators uh, in that regard. And so, as an example, like we got hooked up with some cozy cubes from Salva the Sanctuary, some dank, dank hash infused gummies. We got some gooey cannabis. I believe her name was M Melissa or Michelle. This this is great. <laughs> this is a gooey. These are gooey crosses, is my understanding. And dude, I brought the Cambodian, you guys. Holy shit. Yo, Cambodian was popular. Yeah, dude. Put smiles in everybody's faces. I gave it, I gave a lot away. I gave, gave it all away. It's gone. I had a little, like a couple bowls this morning. Maybe three of like this, the last of the last. The bottom of the jar. Yeah, dude. So that was a success. Jay, Jeff from Jade Nectar, he made it. That was super cool. I'm so glad that he did. Um, you got a sandwich in there? He got to connect. So, you know, dude, you have no idea what's in there. <laughs> Do you know what's in here? I, I kind of looked earlier. I didn't open it up, but I, saw, I was like, what is that? <laughs> uh, and Jeff is the gentleman that uh, grew the Cambodian Mondal Kiri in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Jade Nectar is the only licensed farm there in the Santa Cruz mountains, uh, in the County of Santa Cruz, all the other licensed farms are in other places, but, uh, you know, what's in here. <clears throat> dun, 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 Psilocybin. You know what that is? Wait, wait, what did you say first? <laughs> Let me make sure I heard this correct. For the third time. Psilocybin. Before, though, you said something else before that. Dun, 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 dun. I've seen it. After that. No. I, I sound like you said horse pills. Ever. Oh, that's, horse. That's, yeah, that's horse what, pill. I was like, wait a second. Because of the size of it. They call that a horse pill. Oh, okay. I was like, you never heard that before? <laughs> no. Really? Okay. Well, hey. I mean, I do stay away from pills. Damn. Yeah, me too. But those are the kind of. Didn't you take? <laughs> oh, what are you, these? No, you took something. Uh, didn't you take like a microdose? At the oh, end? you know what? I took a piece of shroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which who? who uh, where'd you get it from? You know, I can't even remember their names, but they were at the table that was next to us. Oh wow, dude, that's cool. All right, nice. And how'd you feeling? Good. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. <laughs> I, I was. I honestly. I mean, I was waiting for it to like, you know, it was a, it was a small, small little bit. And I was wondering if I was, if it was going to hit me, but there was one point with our lights when I was, I was like, they're looking a little brighter than usual. <laughs> so if it, if it did hit me, I assume it was right there. You know, what's wild is that that party went until like four in the morning. I, the I morning. know what, that does not surprise me. That <laughs> really doesn't surprise me. And they had fireworks at the end of the night. That's dope. Imagine being That's all shroomed dope. up looking at fireworks. <laughs> and acid too and shit. Uh, I've actually never done acid. So. Me either. But I'm saying like, I can imagine. 10,000 subscribers and we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, I don't know about that. I don't know. I guess for some things, I've I'm just like uh, <laughs> cautious or, or surprisingly reserved. Okay. Okay. How was that last rip, Jonas? It was cool. It was cool. Feeling great. Hell yeah. No, it was a vibe like none other, dude. Area 101 is a legendary place. It's where the Emerald Cup got started. Uh, it's where so much magic happens. It's where a core group of um, individuals, you know, just hold it down. And if you're cool, those doors are open. I'm saying 
uh, there's people that live there and, uh, there's a kitchen and, you know, post up. I never think of stopping. People live there. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I, I had, I had the, uh, like I had the idea. But I, was, I, was, I wasn't sure. I was like, it was a dope spot. It was a dope I don't spot. know if some of the people that we know that, you know, for sure Probably want not. us to know, want everybody to know that they live there, but yeah, definitely some people do. <clears throat> now I'm trying to think we smoke so much weed, so much weed is pa- being passed around. I rolled up a fatty and I passed it to you. Yes, you did. Yeah, that was cool. And then uh, you left me with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it kept going and going. And it was actually your um, cherry licorice, Heather. I saved a cola. And those uh, young cats that came from San Jose in the East Bay, I hooked him up with the rest of this jar. I just kept this, this bud. Okay. So I can smell I can smell the cherry. I can get some cherry notes. It smells nice. Hey, you don't smell too. Nice. I mean, how does you, how's you, you smell it at all? It smells nice. I mean, I don't okay. really smell the cherry, but you know, it does smell nice. Okay, okay, okay. I don't want to put you on blast. All right. When do you not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fun. Don Carlos. No, I, th- I would say this has Don less Carlos. of a nose, but dude, what a nice color. Look at those buds. Holy shit. Nice. Good job, Heather. Great job. Ooh, that does smell nice. Yeah, so it's cool when you're in a place where it's like literally the spirit of giving out a seed swap. I mean, I gave away. This is the new packaging for Elite Frog Genetics. Looks sticky. Pretty cool. Right here. Really happy with these. La Paz International Seed Bank. Thank you. You can check it out at gwsb.tv. Got some new additions from Freeborn Selections. Why? Because I ran into Jackson yesterday. He was hanging out for a while. Yeah, it's true. I think he shaved last time we did an interview with him. <coughs> That's why I didn't recognize him. In, in he the shaved? TV. I think so. Uh, it's a good question. I have to go back and see. This does have a nice smell, though. It does. Yeah, it does. Damn. <laughs> Guess I have to smoke some of this. So it was really nice. John got gifted a huge cola, dude. It's like yeah, an ounce. man. Like an ounce cola. She was nice. I smoked a little bit of it. I rolled a joint last night. Aren't these the coolest pins you've ever seen? They are pretty neat. Woodwide's little pins. They're badass, these dude. Are pretty cool. You can't really see, but oh, yeah. it's pretty cool. It is pretty, and it's got some nice weight to it. You know, it's got some nice weight to it. That's how you can, you know, it's, it feels. It's, it's a huge filter. for a pin, bro. It's oh, huge. Yeah, this thing, it's making a statement. That's what it is. Yeah, you it, fit it, like it's, four pins in there. It, it says, it says, this is saying vote for, <coughs> vote for me. <laughs> we are. We are the champions. But you see, I think it's proper to do it that big because the nature of their logo, the background, they have all this intricacy, you know, like a mycelium network. And they have a hummingbird and a pot plant and, you know, a, a trout, it looks like. Uh, freshwater fish, maybe it's salt water. Some yeah, mushrooms cool, are in cool there. Cool little dude. details on there. See the mushrooms? Let me see. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a in the bottom lot, right. There's a whole bunch of different little things on here. There's a praying mantis, a slug. You know. Yeah. So that size does it justice, but it's boss. It's boss, dude. Your bumblebee. And again, dude, uh, it's really cool that um, what's happening is I don't want to call it a rebound, but definitely uh, a change every day towards appreciating what real quality is what um a craft brand really is you know and in my opinion it's not a brand that's owned by a a a group of corporate investors and a board of directors it's a brand that's owned by the farmer you know and where the farmer's in control and you know, weed has always been something personable, and the best weed has always come from a mom and pops. Always. It's always come from, you know, elite groups of growers that have dedicated themselves to the craft. And now with the legalization of cannabis, everybody's up for sale in terms of that's the attitude of what I'm going to say the adversaries. 
You know, there's a price on everybody's head, dude. What does that mean is come work for us. You know what's happened historically? Ex grower says, okay, that sounds great, dude. I'm gonna get paid 40 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, benefits, all that shit. They find out what you know, they learn what you know, and they squeeze your ass out. And they say, peace out, dude. We don't need you anymore. We're gonna hire somebody for cheaper. And the and every year goes cheaper, cheaper. And you know what I'm saying? That song and dance. It's not that's not anything like that you want to be a part of. Um the lure for for power or not it's not so much for a girl working for a big brand, even though it might sound powerful, I guess, in its in its respect. But um the promise of <clears throat> being connected with you know, a, a brand that has perceived power, popularity, or pool. Um, and I'm noticing that, you know, it, it's important as best as we can to follow the natural alignment of things, you know. Can't force things to happen, uh, you know. And if our goals are to make big money and fast, again, anything is possible. It's just... Uh, those worlds are populated by people that that's all they care about. And in cannabis, where that line is drawn, I, th I believe is where craft exists. And it's such a special thing because you can't buy the vibes that we got to experience. I'm saying those people are not up for sale. And those people will never <clears throat> sell out in that regard. And just like anything else, once you taste the real thing, once you experience the real thing, it's like, um, right? You've never had sex before, right? And and finally you get to have sex, and you're like, oh my god, this is fucking fantastic, right? Fuck. And if you're watching, you're still a virgin. It's all right. It it'll happen, you know. And if you want to remain a virgin, that's okay too. It's all good. Now, so imagine like saying, okay, well. Let's pretend, let's pretend to have sex, you know? It's like, it's a big difference between actually engaging in the act and like pretending, like what the fuck does that even mean, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I guess dry humping is something that came to mind, but I don't mean to be sexual right now, I'm just saying, I'm trying to get a point across that when it comes to cannabis culture, you know, there, there's the real thing, and once you experience it, you're like, fuck yeah, this is great. Great, you know. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? Talk no, to I'm me. laughing at you, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Funny. Yeah, dude. And I believe that. I believe that. You know. And it's like whether you're a boy or a girl, you know. And and so and you feel like someone's just trying to fuck over on you, or just like, you know, fuck, and you know what I'm saying. Versus like really being into you. It's like the same thing with this business, you know, where. Um, everything's like a hit and run. Everything's like, let's get as much money as we can off of this person, this business relationship and bounce. And the, and the events that we'll throw, we'll give away free joints. We'll, you know, fucking get the people to come and, but everything's designed to make money, you know, versus really sharing positive vibe, you know, sharing love in a different way. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, I think the whole sex thing is a funny example and it's, it's a prudent one because when I say love, it doesn't mean you have to be fucking you know, it's not a romantic love. It's a positive thing, you know, and, and it's cool. It's cool to experience it within weed because a lot of us, including myself, haven't experienced it. Just like that electric feeling you get at a, at a baseball game or a professional sports game, your favorite team, you get to go for the first time, right? Watch your favorite team live. Everybody's like, yeah, this is fucking dope. But with weed, you know, it's, it's easy to get it twisted with all the shit that's out there. Uh, and, and when I say the brightest days are ahead, I think because it's the, the coolest experiences are ahead for all of us. Like, I joke around a lot <clears throat> with this guy, but, like, I know that, like, uh, the cool stuff that we've got to do together, you know, and, and Rolf, too, like, going to Pakistan this weekend, I'm sure, are things like maybe some aspects of what he did this weekend. Like, as an example, I've spoken to people out with a Cambodian, right? I hand <clears throat> my homegirl, Rachel, this bong. And she's got a bird on her shoulder. Yo, that was fucking wild. <laughs> okay, I want John to tell a story. No. no well, you, I take a bong here. All right. Well, <clears throat> like, I don't even remember how it got, like, how did, did the bird just do it? 
The birds started going for it. The birds just went for it. And then that's when everyone's attention was like, what the? This bong, t- this, this bird took a bong hit. <laughs> that was the craziest so, thing. So Rachel took a bong hit, right? And, and the bird gets excited. And apparently she's been through this before. So she pulls it and leaves it milky. So it starts to come out of here. Right, right. And the bird walks from her shoulder right where the bong's at, you know, like down here. Puts his beak right here, kind of bites the lip a little bit, and he's fucking, you know, getting the fucking smoke. And, and when she wild. says, "Oh, do you like it?" Some shit like that. It's on. It's on the post on Instagram. He's like, he responds. He chirps something. But yeah, he he took multiple bong hits. So, yeah, at least like four. <laughs> at least four. You know what was funny? Like when I you know, when, when I think about it now, you know what it reminds me? Like I'm sh- <laughs> the closest thing to this, this this bird that I think about. Is, you've seen scary movie too i mean it's been a while but yeah the, 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 the bird that talks there i don't know like the, well, it kind of looked like him too a little bit kind of like the bird a little bit no nah, I, I might be wrong on that but, no worries yeah yeah but uh it was just that was pretty incredible the bird is funny dude a weed smoking bird that's legend dude that's fucking legend so i mean i think i won't forget that anytime soon no matter where what party you're at that makes a great story that's yeah you're like you ever seen a bird get high i I have to. <laughs> I literally have. You can say that. <clears throat> and it's not no bullshit. So, I need to take this bong rip. You're and smoking reapers? Again, this is GW Smoke Break. And at the same time, I'm operating La Paz International Seed Bank. And uh, it feels cool, man, to hand out uh, genetics from South Africa. Good looking out. Leapfrog. Jock at Leapfrog, dude. And did I give away one of these? I'm pretty sure I did. Definitely some box. The hoppers. Even for the people. It's the people. I'll get the lid, but yeah, I do that right there. It's the new packaging. Landrace Genetics, dude. Weed is tight. Weed is tight. Yep. And the word on the street is that I think some stuff is on the way. We'll just have to see. Oh, shit. Care packages inbound? Is that what I'm hearing? The seeds that um, were gathered when we were there. Oh, interesting. (laughs) Interesting, interesting. He says interesting. Yep. So I need to take this rip, dude. Uh, any feedback on this one? <clears throat> nope. I'm that was the Dawn. No, that was the uh, Blackberry Licorice. The Blackberry Licorice. It's cool. It was nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> so I got a lot to say, man. And it's a renaissance Speak that's happening, man. Because, like, the new school cats came out because we were advocating for it. You know what I'm saying? Poncho Brothers came out. Mm-hmm. You know, made sure this guy behaved himself, <laughs> and uh, it was cool, dude. It was cool. We laugh. We always laugh when we're together. Uh, it's cool, uh, you know, that John's connected with the Poncho Brothers in the way that he has, because I can tell they have a good time and dope dudes. Yeah, I have a problem. I'm always bouncing around, like I'm saying. So I'll be chopping it up, and then cut out this and that. But uh, their dad is fucking hilarious He's as well. So funny. Were you there when he was giving me a hard time talking to the older gentleman about this guy's a player for the Spanish soccer team? Or I heard something. I think I was walking past, though. Oh, I dude, think, he know, was I cracking think... me up, dude. <laughs> he was just... Not, when I say talking shit, it wasn't... He's, he's talking smack, like having a good time. Yeah, yeah, you know? he, was, yeah it was, he wasn't trying to cap me or funny. nothing. He's a funny dude. Heck of funny. He's so funny. you see the personality and the brothers, and you're like, where does this come from? Yeah, they, are, they are cool people. They you don't cool got to look far, because the whole family was there, dude fucking wolf pack yeah i always think that's great like the whole family they you know they they, they do it all together i think that's awesome and you know what i told them i said in las buenas o en las malas which in spanish means like even the good times the bad times i mean you got to deal with shit it's real life you know what i'm saying it's like no matter what you guys have each other and i was like that's so fucking cool because it's like most of us <clears throat> we're operating like solo bolo i mean we got you can have a business partner you can have a homie but like John's like John is John is like a younger brother to me, you know what I'm saying? Um, but we're not um, blood, and it's not to take away from that. I, uh, my point is, it's real special when you have you know the whole blood. Okay, hold on, dude. Now we're gonna have to cut hands and shit like this <laughs> on camera. <laughs> blood in, blood out, fool. Now, nah, but uh, you're funny. You know, it's it's cool though. It's cool how uh, you know you get to see that because it is rare, you know. Um, like I think of Nat and his daughter Hall- Hallie, you know, she's been with him since she was a youngster and, um, it, it's a reminder that this is, um, it's really cool for that to break through the stigma that families have against cannabis, you know, like you become the black sheep 
when you start fucking with a plant. So, big ups, Poncho Brothers. And we're just talking about the people that were there. Uh, my bad. Um, I gotta take this hit. <laughs> <laughs> Who Go else on, did you talk sir. to, John? T- take, take, take your hit. Take your hit. Let's see. How was your guys' this weekend? How was everyone? How's everyone doing? What you, what would you guys smoking? What you guys smoking on? And what did you smoke over the weekend? If you did smoke. Smoke screen attack. That doesn't ruin your camera, does it? I mean, that's the camera that filmed Midnight Bite, so I don't want to fuck with it. You mean you'll get my bill? <laughs> Damn. I hate it when, talk, when he talks to me that way, dude. No, man, but uh, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, everything I want to share with you about the, the event. There was a fire pit outside with fire. There's plenty of edibles you can buy. You know, snacks to buy. Ayana had her cookies for sale. She had these dank $4 natural organic. I mean, she had a Hershey kiss on top or something that was like a Hershey kiss. Uh, and that was, she called them a peanut butter blossom. And those were $4. And then the oatmeal cookies were five bucks. They were fucking huge. Yeah, I was going to say, those things were huge. Those things were big. Definitely worth the fucking money. And she sold out except for four cookies. And they're here. So I'll split one with John after the show if he wants to split one. It's all good. Uh, I won't charge him either, you guys. And uh, <laughs> uh, what else I want to say? Yeah, man, there's plenty of vendors. So all the sanctuary was there hooking up the fucking dank. You got to see this, bro. I don't think you've seen this. Dude, there's a glob in here. There's a ma- globus maximus. Oh! Oh, my God! I think it's like two grams in there. <laughs> That's classic. What the dude. hell was that? <laughs> <coughs> it's my reaction. That is nice. It kind of looks like Heck a, a nice, kind of looks dude. like a rose too. You know, Heck and nice. You look at the top of a rose. Oh wow! See, it's rubbing off on him, you guys. It's rubbing off on him. That smells really nice. Heck a loud, dude. So Sovereign Sanctuary hooked that up. I mean, hell, the cats were were around. Shout out Jackson from Freeborn Selections. Shout out Jerry First Cut Farms hooking up some more of the Vietnamese black cash, which is in here. What was the gentleman's name? Um, older cat. Who are you calling a gentleman? It was it? Um, I think he said his name was like Dark Gray. Or oh my God. Do you know who I'm talking about? Hold on, hold on. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so good. <laughs> I, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so fucking good. Juan, you are my hero. <laughs> <laughs> I have too much fun, dude. But it's true. This reaction is fucking great. Oh, baby. It's like this nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so dark gray guy. I think he's, he said his nickname was Dark Gray. He's an older, older dude. Um, Did he have a beard? Yeah, he had a beard. Oh, uh, was he wearing a hat? I, Robert? Was he named Robert? I don't remember. I don't think he told me what his real name was. What did you guys talk about? <laughs> no, he was just cool. He was a nice dude. Um, he was Soft-spoken nice kind of? But I, 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 th- I, was like, what, I was like, when he told me his, his, his nickname, he's like, people call me Dark like, Gray. Dark Gray. I was like, oh. I, 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 I could have missed I don't think I know that person. Though. I don't know, but it was, it was interesting. It was least oh, was okay. Good. No, no, no. Major Resin is what Robert's nickname is. He wouldn't say Dark Gray. Major Resin. Jesus. That doesn't crazy. sound like Dark Gray, so I don't think it was him. Like that. <laughs> but that smells really nice. The Vietnamese Black? Yeah. Yeah, dude. That was that was uh, good sound effects, huh? <laughs> yeah. You kind of squeeze this to get a little bit of a richer smell, but it's nice. No, you guys are really blessed here in Northern California where, you know, the genetics go around, the operators take it seriously. And uh, the good stuff definitely makes waves. And, you know, I'm rocking with Evermore Genetics, the next addition to the seed bank. Actually, higher heights before that because he was next for sure. He's been really patient with me. But what I'm saying is that he breeds strains that are good for hashing and washing. And so uh, talking to Juan at Solving the Sanctuary, he heard of the Otter Pops. He's like, no, yeah, I've heard of that strain. So it's really cool, man. And, you know, every day is a learning experience. 
And personally, that's what I enjoyed the most about being at uh, the spot on Saturday at, at uh, Area 101 is just watching everybody enjoy themselves, talking to so many people and not having to, to work, you know, filming, having the table didn't feel like work. Um, and I, I basically gave away some seeds. I sold a pack of Jackson's gear, which was cool. And uh, it's always dope hanging out with a guy, man. Definitely, definitely. What's up, Greg? What's happening? Everybody that's watching. Yep. Oh, shit, man. Out there. Nice, nice, dude. Heck yeah. So, again, dude, we got to visit an indoor facility on Friday in Mendocino and Fort Bragg. That was super dope. Um, wrapped it up with a visit to the beach and some more drone shots. You got to go all the way out. You saw all that wildlife, all the sea life that Mikey took pictures of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really right there with them. We, we, we. Uh, that's when we jumped across the rocks. Yeah. To get yeah. More towards the uh the water. And it's yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, dude. The water was close. <laughs> yeah, the water dude. Was close. It looked deep too. Yeah, you don't want to get hit by a rogue wave. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> it would not be a fun time. Yeah, man. So again, dude, it was a nice balance of work and just enjoying ourselves out in nature, man. The magnificence of the Mendocino coastline. Uh, and we do owe a plant shop a visit because the original plan was to uh, hit them both up at once in one day. But it just proved to be too much. You know, it's important, I think, as I'm, as I'm learning, when you schedule your work day out, you know, to, to leave time for certain things like eating and transportation, travel time. You know, we got, we both got hit with a stop sign where we were stuck for like 20 minutes, 15, 20 yeah. minutes. Yeah. That was uh, <coughs> was interesting, but we got to take bong rips in the car <laughs> right there in the Redwoods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We sure did. Uh, Justin got caught up a little bit as well, you know, but regardless, uh, I'm trying to think what else to share with you guys, you know, from these nice magical, uh, there, there's psilocybin capsules in here. Um, that we got gifted, which is super cool, you know, and being able to share these packs of leapfrog genetics, that was super cool. I mean, we got back to the hotel on Friday night around eight, eight thirty. This guy crashed out, you know, relatively soon. I did. Yep. I did. I stayed up till two in the morning, dude. Fucking go just ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? But it needed to be done. I had to like label all these uh a few hundred and and ch cut up some stickers that were in all in one like sheet how many did you do <sighs> i want to say like at least like a couple hundred at, at the most right around there i'd say yeah and how many did you get rid of i gave away a good amount of seed absolutely i gave away probably like i don't know probably no more than two dozen packs oh, nice. no more than that nice. but um when it comes to seeds uh, I mean, Jock mailed me these from like, South Africa. Well, I guess what the benefit is, like, you got them done now. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, dude, fuck, I'm just on one right now. Um, but when it comes to seeds, that's part of how you get your name out is by giving it away, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Just like uh, for a movie, I think it's hard to, I mean, you can watch your movie for free right now on on uh, YouTube. Correct. But dude, once you come up, man, you have to pay to watch that thing. For sure. It's like the fucking real deal. Uh, I get that. Yeah, so I'm learning. I'm learning. But I feel you, though, dude. I feel you. Because the one sale that I did make, and again, I wasn't really there trying to hustle or push. I was chilling. Was uh, I literally got seeds from Jackson. I put them on the table. And within 10 minutes, fucking somebody had bought a pack. Of the grape lime skunk, which you can get too right now on the website. One hundred twenty dollar make you holla for show. <laughs> Where that came from? <laughs> I have no idea. This guy. Oh man. This guy. You're funny. What are we smoking on, John? Anything? Feeling good? What is next? What have we not done yet? I think we've done pretty much each one now yeah or is cherry the last one did we smoke we just smoked the don carlos I think we, yeah yeah it's cherry you smoked cherry, cherry. We, so we've smoked all three then after this one yeah and we smoked this one the day of check it out we opened it up earlier 
Which is heel, you guys? Which is heel? It's a true story. <clears throat> I've been like, uh, I feel like I haven't drinking water these past couple days. Gotta drink that water. Oh my goodness. That quality H2O. Yes, dude, yes. I ran out on Saturday. I ran out. That smells good, dude. Cherry licorice. So that cola, you enjoyed it? Yeah, it was nice, you know. It's drying. There's left of it. Well, there's a big chunk of it left. I mean, I didn't roll that fat out of the joint, but... There's literally like an ounce there, dude. Seriously. It's a lot of herb. It's a good amount Yeah, shout out to our boy who uh, was so kind. As Hog Heaven uh, Composter came out here from San Jose as well. I know. Yeah, that was dope. That was dope that someone else made the travel. You know, that was, that was pretty cool. He was a dope dude, too. Man, a, a few words, but he was uh he was definitely yeah, he was definitely always dope. rolling, always smoking. Yo, my guy was came. He was, like he was stoned as fuck the whole time. <laughs> he was chilling. You know? I was like, this guy is dope. <laughs> Hell yeah! Yeah, so shout out to him. Yep, it's cool, dude. And like I said, those youngsters that came out from the East Bay in San Jose, that was tight. I don't think I met them. Okay. No, yeah, I don't think I met them. Uh, they're in one of the pictures that I posted, uh, the last post about it. But that's what I was seeing earlier is that's what it's about, you know, is, is passing it down to the new generation. You know, the whole energy of, of uh, you know, love for the plant, community, and for that to live on, dude. Because we're, we're all only here for so long. It smells pretty good. And when you're able to do some, you know, positive... A work of art or uh, anything really you know there's different ways to express yourself i think the beauty of it is that people can learn from it connect with it and when it comes to cannabis some things shouldn't be lost and they will never be lost you know as much as this modern world tries to erase the things um that tend to liberate can liberate us from the control that they really try to exert, you know, on us. Because a challenge to the status quo is a danger indeed. Hmm. Wise words, Mr. Daniel. I have my lighter. Oh, yes, you. yes. Thank Look you. He's throwing things around. Yeah, you know, I've just had it up to here with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sir. Wow, man. So, someone has an idea. Yo. Which one? Uh, Should organize an event like the Cannabis Cup, but for cannabis content, just an idea of much love. Like where we compete to make content or so we can film at an event? Because believe me, dude, the Marijuana Multiverse works in mysterious ways. And there's a place called Harris, a Bell Springs Road. It's in the cut, but it's dope. It's fucking deep marijuana country. And... Ayana and I were offered the keys to the spot to stay for like a weekend, and it's got the most fucking beautiful view of the King's Mountain Range, King's Peak. Uh, and the other side of King's Peak is the Pacific Ocean. You catch the most beautiful sunsets. If you go to Ridgeline Farms' Instagram page, it's the same view. It's a very similar view. Why? Because it's right around, it's right there, it's right, similar place, it's right up the hill. <clears throat> you know, and the guy got the spot, and it was, better believe it was built with money from you know what, you know what I'm saying, during the war on you know what, and the homie fucking was operating, you know what, and that fucking, that house was made, that deck was made. Just, it's fucking awesome, dude. It's really, really nice. And when we talk about having an event or a get-together, you know, there's all kinds of ideas, but, like, even a spot to stay at for more like a private where you can go up with, you know, five of your homies and really just enjoy a slice of humble from, from there. Um, you know, so to answer your question, yeah, as far as having an event, it has crossed my mind. Um, and 
Yeah, I think it's just a matter of time, dude, because shit just keeps rolling. But for now, the main focus is definitely um, getting down with the licensed uh, world in terms of creating content, you know, that can populate, live on their website, their YouTube channel, you know, Instagram. Um, even content that can be played within dispensaries would be sick. I'd love that. So, the, again, the first step was working with Justin for the first time, even though we have worked in the past. You know, years have gone by, and it's important for me to, John, uh, w you know, also work with Justin. And, um, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I think it was cool. It was all good. There's some hiccups along the way. I'm saying... Like the bong hits that we took, you know, it fucking Justin had a rare experience of like going yeah. down the wrong nostril or, you know, just, it was a, I packed in like a stem or something by accident or fucking, I don't know what well, I did. Said, he said the smoke came out of his eye. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, it's kind of like the equivalent, I I would say. How was the rip, by the way? It was nice. It was nice. But he didn't, unfortunately, it was not a fun time for him. Well, for a minute, yeah, because yeah. it's like you take a bong hit and the smoke comes in hot and, like, you're inhaling it and then you cough it out. You ever coughed at a bong hit? That shit hurts. But, like, he made it sound like it, it when he coughed it out, it came out his nose with undue pressure, with like, high pressure because it felt like it was coming out of his eye, too. I didn't see smoke coming out of his eye, but his eye came out red, dude. It was red instantly. Um, so I felt bad because I was like, dude, maybe I shouldn't have offered him a bong hit. But he's like... No, dude, I take bong hits all the fucking time. He's like, I don't know what it was, bro. Like packing me a stem or something. So I can't, you know, fuck. Trying to poison the team already. <laughs> exactly. I was like, what the fuck sabotage is this? What am I doing, dude? Um, but you know, Justin is a professional. He just needs some time. And it was cool to see these guys work together, um, to have that shot list in place and uh, really cut out a lot of time that we would have just been, you know figuring things out on it's the spot just, it's a prof it's a more professional thing to do and uh, it's the only way to do it move, moving forward yes and it's just you know it just makes like this it makes attitude it change see what i deal with it makes the work condescending attitude <laughs> 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 no nah, man take Absolutely. your hit take your hit <laughs> this guy talks about dutch angles and fucking i bet you couldn't even point out to me the dutch angle hold on the dutch no, I can't because ah, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Like a hero <laughs> shot or over the shoulders no, kind of self-explanatory. So, mm. Okay, what's the Dutch angle? I, I mean, you're not making it's it up, are you? No, it's, at a, it's, it's when the camera's turned, you know, horizontally to get an impact or to put your character out of place. You know, it's, oh. it's, it's an emotional impact. Kinda. Oh. oh, so it's horizontal. Yes. Oh, at an angle, though. At an angle. Got you. See? Okay. This guy's guess is not making it up after all. Wow. You Interesting. Know the, you know what the vertigo? Vertigo? Yeah, the vertigo. The vertigo. They do. Oh, the talk. movie. No, no, the effect. In it, the movie, vertigo, it, right? Uh, I'm sure they did it in it, but yeah. Oh, you're talking about the effect of vertigo? Yeah, the, there's an there's a effect. There's an effect. Like Called a, vertigo. Yeah, the vertigo oh. with the camera. When you, you spin it? You know, when you push in. And you you zoom out slowly, and it, it they do it in Jaws. I think it's probably most prominent in Jaws. It's called, that's called Vertigo because I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I think I've heard a more technical term of it. Um, but <coughs> yeah, I know what you're talking you about. You know exactly which one I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah, that as you move closer to your subject, you're actually zooming out. Out. Yep, yep. Got it. Got it. It gives them that weird push and pull tension on the character. Don't give away all the secrets, bro. I mean, damn. No, I'm just kidding. Get a little lesson. No, for reals, for reals. It's dope. So this these are the kinds of shots and the concepts that we're in incorporating and you know gonna be messing around with moving forward a hundred percent, dude. Did you get to work with some of Justin's gear? Yeah, I did with some of his cam with uh, with one of his cameras. What'd you think? Uh he's got a nice lens. He has a nice lens. You know, it was it was cool. The drone was pretty cool. I gotta pull mine out. Hundred percent, bro. That'd be sick. No, with the beach shots, those those were cool. That was cool. So the moral of the story is, the Lost Coast is waiting for you too. Emerald Triangle is waiting for you too. We could see Shelter Cove, and motherfucking King's Peak from where we were at in Forbrack. 
Remember he was pointing that out? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I remember that. Poor Bright. The romanticization, the romanticization of uh, California, that that romantic kind of like, you know, nature and <clears throat> that wild, you know, natural element, that final frontier, you know, the shit you see in the movies, that shit exists in Mendocino, in Humboldt County, and there's weed there for you to buy, for you to bring. Um, it doesn't get much better, dude, you know? And we're not the uh, owners of the marijuana multiverse, dude. It's simply a thing that I reference to as like, you know, when you're with your homies and you're getting high, he just jumped into the marijuana multiverse, dude. You know, for reals. So anytime, any place, anything is possible. And uh, it's a beautiful thing to be a part of, dude. So, you know, the brightest days are ahead. You know what I'm saying? We're doing this virtually and there's virtual reality that's coming out, you know, with the headsets and you might think it's funny, but it's true. I fucking took a class for that already uh, a couple of years ago. And I say that because the kind of experiences that we can share together are only going to increase, whether they're like physical experiences, like being at the same event, you know, or virtual like this. Um, and I'm excited, dude. So, again, just can't thank you enough for being part of the journey. And, uh, damn, dude, my timing's pretty fucking good. <laughs> natural wow 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 yeah fuck yeah any time of the year dude you know what i'm saying i feel you like summertime it's hot and shit but like there's so much diversity in in that nature like in the season seasonal differences that even in the cold when it's like storm and rain and it's a dope spot to fucking have a fire read a book write a script fucking do whatever you know what i'm saying chill um which i've been there in the fall i mean i've been there yeah all all different times of the year, but it's, it's just astounding, completely astounding, dude. Totally, you know, takes you aback. It's like, you don't realize that a part of California really exists like this. So as usual, uh, I'm just going to say that uh, again, thank you for your support. Check out the website. We got beans for sale. Um, I think I'm going to have THCA for sale pretty soon, dude. So we'll see what's up. You know what I'm saying? You might, be interested in something like that. Um, Ten dollars shipping across the country, and um, it's just the way the world is changing. You know what I'm saying? So, thank you to the um, that hemp bill or these loopholes that uh, are just there. You know, so just means more access. And that being said, check out the website. There's no THCA right now. There's seeds that you can grow that'll give you THCA. For those of you guys that don't know, the loophole is that this weed right here is THCA. It's not THC until I burn it, until we burn it. That's the funny shit. That, that's what it boils down to. So in case you're wondering. Um, thank you, Heather, for the dank. Awesome fucking dank. Uh, I mean, John, we can smoke another round before we go. We can wrap it up. I mean, how you feeling, man? It is your call, sir. Huh. You know, I think we can rock another... Another round. I'd like to smoke one of these afghuis. You kept one of these bags for yourself, right? Is that what happened? Yes, I have one bag. Awesome. That one? Great. Yeah, so that's that's the shit that's going down. And so I think that the future is beautiful. I think that there's many experiences to share together. And it's really cool to be able to put your mind to something and see the payoff, you know, whatever it is you're doing as well, you know? And so I'm just encouraging you to keep pursuing your dreams. Oh, it smells really good. Holy shit. That smells like a sexy soapy. Dude, this is like perfumed up. Oh, wow. Wow. Damn, bro. Tell me what you think. Let me see. Damn. One more round here. And on Wednesday, you guys, I'll be interviewing Hummingbud Farms. They're up in Humboldt County. Uh, Zach got seeds of the Hopper 2023. 
Oh, no, but I guarantee you the THC you get from me, you'll fucking love. I'll guarantee you that, dude. I'll guarantee you that. I will guarantee you that. 100%. Because we're smoking on it right now. Well, something akin, something similar. You won't, yeah, the half gooey wouldn't be on there, literally. But yeah, only quality here at GW Smoke Break. Interesting, I feel like I smell it less. Well, uh, the this gooey brand is like Afgu, Afgu Crosses. And the Afgu is known for being some strong shit. So I expect there to be a kick. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. So for this final round, I will say that um, the marijuana multiverse is here. You know, I fucked around to watch Spider-Man Part Two, the cartoon. Again? And uh, again? No, no, no. I'm saying I have it downstairs. Oh, oh. I can watch it whenever I want, John. But <laughs> he's like again. Uh, and it, it fucking it rocked my world, dude, and it, and it opened my mind to the world of the multiverse, and so. Now, the marijuana multiverse is a term that I've coined. I'm proud of it. And again, dude, <laughs> it's not something that it's like, oh, only when you watch GW Smoke Break are you in the marijuana multiverse. Fuck no. That shit exists every time you get high, dude. Every fucking time. And you're in that frame of mind and shit, you know? So it's dope. You better believe that when you're getting high, you connect with everybody else that's also getting high and, and you know, in that frame of mind around the world. And it's like, yeah. And when you can connect like this, it's just affirmative you know doesn't get much better you know what i'm saying and you, we can always rewatch shit you don't have to watch shit live it's cool when it's live um and we're just going to keep evolving with our reality here in california and what i will say is this at the end of 2022 we wanted to do global and we went and john got to go to the uk and we all went to pakistan you know what i'm saying it was just rolf and myself for spain last year Spanavis is going down this weekend coming up in Spain. Some of our homies like Nate at Higher Heights is already out there eating good, networking, getting respect, and all that good shit, man. It's fucking awesome. Now, uh, for us, you know, the, the message that was conveyed to me, you know, as I meditated on this, is to stay in California and add value to the supply chain, as I was saying, you know. Um, conversations are coming up. As an example, I'm talking about synchronicity. How'd you like that? That was nice. A little, a little harder on the lungs this time around. But. Okay. I kind of smelled that for some reason. <clears throat> it's hard to describe how that smells. Um, and what I'll say is that a conversation I'm having tomorrow morning is going to be about this Cambodian Mondul Kiri is the dank, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a country called Cambodia where it comes from. And somebody that we know who's anonymous for now. I mean, this is just, this is conversation, right? This is how, this is how things start. It may just end as conversation, but the oh. nature of the conversation, homeboy, is going. What I am saying is going to camp. Somebody that we know, John hasn't met this person in particular, but somebody that I know is going to Cambodia in July by chance already for an undisclosed reason that should our trip actually manifest itself. Um, I'm sure it's okay to share why he's going there because it's not for, um, uh, however, as a result of this Mondil Kiri phenomenon, he being the owner of a prominent indoor brand here in California, uh, would be down to run it indoor, even though it's a deep cycle plant, a long cycle plant, which means that you flower cannabis normally indoors, eight weeks tops harvested. This is 12 to 16 weeks, you know, 12, 14 weeks. So naturally, especially during times of prohibition, 
it's really risky and it's not really prudent. Uh, it doesn't make sense to flower uh, strains that long because you're compromising your ability to ideally in, in 12 months in a year, you want to clock six, run, six runs as an indoor grower. That's how you know you're rocking and rolling. And most guys only had one room to operate, whereas other, you know, if you're running various rooms, that number multiplies. Um, but if you're talking about one room, your best your best bet is is six runs. If you're clocking 50 day runs, 55 day runs, you can clock six and, and then start your next one. You know what I'm saying? You have some days on on it, and you better believe that in in a world where every day is a risk, that's exactly what you're doing. And I I, I took great pride in flipping a cycle, chopping it down with the help of my friends, hanging it. And then everything's lined up to pour the soil and get the next one started again. It would happen within 24 hours. And I'm like, fuck yeah, that's the shit. That's the shit. Because it all has a domino effect. Kind of like when you're late to work. Mm -hmm. And it's like, or you're late, you start, you wake up five minutes late and it has a domino effect. You know, it just gets later. Yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. That's funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but times are different now. And my point was, is uh, just like it was a dream to go to Pakistan. And there's conversations about how dope it'd be to go back. Just fucking throw I'm just sharing that with you guys. Uh, but dude, to go to Cambodia, can you imagine, John? Bro. All this guy would say while he's there, he's like, dude, I could film a movie. <laughs> he's like, I could film a, I'll film a comedy here. I'll film a drama there. You're funny. I'm like, John, what's going on? It's like I'm, I'm getting footage for my movie. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's you go. <laughs> this guy. There you go. I know what you mean. It would be an interesting thought, though. A very interesting thought. Going to Cambodia? Yeah. It'd be sick. It'd be a dream. I always wanted to go to a place like Burma, Laos, Cambodia, not Thailand, not Vietnam, which are the borders, bordering countries. That's my mind. When we talk about these places like Burma, and Laos, and Cambodia, and maybe parts of Thailand, I'm sure, of course, those traditional temples and shit. Sounds crazy. You know what I'm saying? Those, I guess I'll have to show you, but those old school temples with the huge faces and you know, the culture is still intact, and it's really ancient in many ways still. Hmm. And this is kind of the same shit we experienced in Pakistan. Like um, the shepherds with the goats on the street, and like and how in many ways the cultures are like ancient still, or some, you know, the way of life in the countryside. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like in Pakistan, when you see like the simple houses or like... Okay, yeah, yeah. Or like the shepherds, you know, with their goats and right, right. walking down the street. That's like mm -hmm. biblical time shit. In my opinion. Maybe you would disagree. Because, you know, John lives in his own multiverse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He's like, no, Daniel. <laughs> I don't recall. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I was hanging out in the back of the truck with the cool guys. Now, uh, time has come, you guys, as much as I hate to say. Uh, Paul Pot was no joke, right? Holiday in Cambodia, Dead Kennedy's smoothies. Whew, very cool. I read some of these comments. Yeah, man, that'd be tight. That'd be tight. But definitely go to Cambodia. If we can go to fucking Pakistan and be good, definitely go to Cam anywhere in the world. It just depends who we're going with, you know what I'm saying? Uh, John, uh, we all want to know, man, a little bit of, um, you know, a little word of wisdom, a little word of wisdom. We all need it. <laughs> nah, um, <clears throat> nah, everyone just, you know, have a good rest of your guys this week. Smoke, smoke's great, you know, every night. <laughs> um, enjoy yourselves, make the best of your days, do something that you don't normally do for yourself tight man dope i would definitely agree with that <clears throat> and once again i want to thank you for watching we got some dope beans available on the website dude from leapfrog genetics freeborn selections affiliate seed vault and who else is on there 
Um, higher Heights will be up soon, and then Evermore Genetics. But again, fresh drop from Freeborn Selection. The dude, some Grape Lime Skunk. We got some Sensi Star um, and a few others. So without further ado, we'll see you guys in, in one week and catch you on Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? Love you guys. Peace. There you go. There you go. Yeah.